the Divine Constitution of Moorish America. The Grand Sheik and the Chairman of Moorish America are empowered to make law and enforce laws with the assistance of the Prophet and the Grand Body of Moorish America. The Assistant Grand Sheik is to assist the Grand Sheik in all affairs if he lives according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, and it is known before the citizens of Moorish America. All meetings are to be open and closed promptly according to the Circle 7 in love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Friday is our holy day of rest because on Friday, the first man was formed in flesh, and on Friday, the first man departed out of flesh and ascended into the Father God Allah. For that cause, Friday is the holy day for all Muslims all over the world. Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice must be proclaimed and practiced by all citizens of Moorish America. No citizen is to put in danger or accuse falsely his brother or sister on any occasion at all that may harm his brother or sister because Allah is love. <clears throat> all citizens must preserve these holy and divine laws. And all citizens must obey the laws of the government because by being Moorish American, you are part and parcel of the government and must live the life accordingly. No organization of Moorish America is to cause any confusion or to overthrow the laws of the constitution of the said government. <clears throat> but to obey hereby. With us, all citizens must proclaim their nationality and we are teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed, that they may know that they are not, that they are part and parcel of this said government and know that they are not Negroes, colored folk, black people, or Ethiopians, because these names were given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779 and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. But this is a new era of time now, and all men must proclaim their free national name to be recognized by the government in which they live and the nations of the earth. This is the reason why Allah, the great God of the universe, ordained Noble Juwali, the prophet, to redeem his people from their simple ways. The Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites who inhabited the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. All citizens must promptly attend their meetings and become part and parcel of uplifting acts of Moorish America. Moorish Americans must pay their dues and keep in line with all necessities of Moorish America, and then you are entitled the name of faithful. Husband, you must support your wife and children. Wife, you must obey your husband and take care of your children and look after the duties of your household. Sons and daughters must obey father and mother and be industrious and become part of the uplifting of fallen humanity. All Moorish Americans must keep their hearts and minds pure with love and their bodies clean with water. This divine covenant is from your holy prophet, Noble Juwali, through the guidance of the Father Allah. Islam. And Islam to Shuja L. Islam to Jerry Bay. Islam. Islam to Bennett Bay. And happy holy day to everybody. Islam love one peace and love, y'all. Happy holy day. Islam. Happy holy day. Brother Ben Bay, Islam, happy holy day. <clears throat> to be proclaimed in every meeting. I'm glad to know that I have a few faithful Moors among you all, and I desire for them to know the truth and divine truth. There is a host of jealousy about me in the movement now by the same people of our side of the nation that claim it was only a joke and unreal. But now, since they have found out from the government officials and the nations of the earth that this is the only sole foundation that all Asiatics must depend on for their earthly salvation as an American citizen, they are working every scheme that they can to disqualify me so they themselves can take charge of the situation. I have notified all these things to you long ago in the past. It is through the faithful Moors that contribute to the movement and uplifting funds. The ones that pay their divine respect to me in the movement will be remembered. That is why I'm calling on all faithful Moors to increase their faithfulness to me, your prophet, and your divine Moorish movement. I need finance, and I need it bad. Never before have I needed finance as badly as I do in the present, that I may shove aside the discord that is facing the nation. It all comes through jealousy because of my fame and nobility. The nations of the world will not recognize the movement without me, the prophet, being the head. 
It has been proven by my work in which I have performed in the last few months because I was at the governor's inauguration to represent the Morris Divine National Movement. And I will be at the inauguration of President Hoover for the same cause. Noble Juwali, <laughs> Islam, uh, Brother Salim, you got it. Islam. Islam. Happy Holy Day, Nobles. Peace and love, man. Happy Holy Day, Noble. Islam, Holy Quran, and the more Son, Temple of America, divinely prepared, divinely prepared by the Holy Prophet, Noble Drew Ali, by the God of his Father, God Allah, the great God of the universe, to redeem man from his sinful and fallen stage of humanity back to the highest plane of life with his Father, God Allah. Islam, Islam. We on chapter, we on chapter 10. We on chapter 10. Jesus spake on the unity of Allah and man to the Hindu. Benares is the sacred city of the Brahms and in Benares, Jesus taught. Eudraco was his host. Eudraco made a feast in honor of his guests and many high-born Hindu priests and scribes were there. And Jesus said to them with much, with much delight, I speak to you concerning life, the brotherhood of life. The universal Allah is one. Yet he is more than one. All things are one. By the sweet breath of Allah, all life is bound in one. So if you touch the fiber of a living thing, you send a thrill from center to the outer bounds of life. And when you crush beneath your foot the meanest worm, you shake the throne of Allah and cause the sword of life to tremble in the sheep. The bird sings out its song for men, and men vibrate in unison to help it sing. The ant constructs its home. The bee its sheltering cone. The spider weaves her web and flowers breathe to them a spirit and their sweet perfume that gives them strength to toil. Now men and birds and beasts and creeping things are deities made flesh and how dare you kill anything. It is cruelty that makes the world arby when men have learned that when they harm a living thing, they harm themselves. They surely will not kill nor cause the thing that Allah has made to suffer pain. A lawyer said, I pray to Jesus, to tell us who is this Allah who you speak, who you speak about. Where is priests, his temples, and his shrines? And Jesus said, the Allah I speak about is everywhere. He cannot be compassed with walls nor hedged with bounds of any kind. All people worship Allah, the one, but all the people see him not alike. This universal Allah is wisdom, will, and love. All men see not the triune Allah. One sees him as Allah of might, another as Allah of thought, another as Allah of love. A man's ideal is his God, and so as man unfolds, his God unfolds. Man's God today, tomorrow is not, tomorrow is not God. The nations of the earth see Allah from different points of view, and so he does not seem the same to everyone. Many names, pardon self, man names the part of Allah he sees, and, and this to him is all of Allah. And every nation sees a part of Allah, and every nation has a name for Allah. You Brahmins call him Parabram, in Egypt he is Thoth, and Zeus is his name in Greece. Jehovah is his Hebrew name. But everywhere, his is the causeless cause, the rootless root from which all things have grown. When men are afraid of Allah and take them for a foe, they dress up other men in fancy garbs and call them priests and charge them to restrain the wrath of Allah by prayers. And when they fail to win his favor by their prayers, to buy him off with sacrifice of animals or birds. When men see Allah is one with him, as Father Allah, he needs no middleman, no priest to intercede. He goes straight up to him and says, my father God, Allah. And then he lays his hands in Allah's own hand and all is well. And this is Allah. You are each one a priest just for yourself and sacrifice of blood Allah does not want. Just give your life in sacrificial service to all of life and Allah is pleased. When Jesus had thus, when Jesus had thus said, he stood aside. The people were amazed, but strove among themselves. Some said he's inspired by Holy Brahm. And others said he is insane. And others says, and others said he is obsessed. He speaks as devils speak. But Jesus tarried not among the guests as one, a tiller of the soil, a generous soul, a seeker after truth who loved the words that Jesus spoke. And Jesus went with him in his home and abode. Islam, my you of the floor. Islam, Al-Nur, Hinona, Islam, happy holy day. 
Nah, peace, Morris. Happy holiday, Muslims. Happy holiday, Islamism. So what's your thoughts on as, as man unfolds, as God unfolds, uh, Brother Salim and anybody? Islam. Uh, I love this chapter. Uh, you know, this 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 the Circle Seven Holy Quran. It really opens up a lot of light, sheds a lot of light on Christianity. You know, uh, uh, Muhammadism. You know, to the extent where we go to church and we learn, you know, church school, all this type of stuff. What we think about God, what we think about Allah. You know, like I'd also say, you know, God is every every, every God is in every single every single person praises the same God. All these people, you know, praise the same God and all uh, we see is a lot of uh, uh, division, you know, but it's crazy that the, the actual essence of God, you know, like they say, uh, when our men are, uh, they dress up other men in fancy garbs and call them priests. So it's crazy that, you know, the main thing we, we do is go to church and go to the pastor, you know, uh, you know, when we was younger back in the day. And it's, and it's, it's really, he, he's really like a, uh, a, a distraction. He, 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 he's not the one to intercede. This is, it says uh, he's not even supposed to be uh, uh, no middleman, no priest to intercede. Like we don't even need that middleman. You know, it's that that temple that us, that us as people are. You know, we the temple, we the church. So it's incredible that when we when we dig up into this this uh, circle seven holy Quran, it kind of flips everything upside down. You know, and it it puts the, the 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 responsibility on you, not necessarily on your church or your your pastor, your priests. And and everything we thought, you know, uh, sacrificing. Uh, oh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta give this. I gotta give this. It's, it's really about yourself. He said, "Give your life in sacrificial service, and our lives please." So it's just, it's just incredible that uh, this, 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 this real word, this, this ancient, this, this ancient old, uh, the old religion. This is the old religion, you know, as it, as it says that this is more pure and it, it makes more sense, you know, when when everyone's accountable for themselves, you know. Uh, but yeah, I I you at the floor with that. I, I just like how it switches everything around that we normally would see as in Christianity, you know, as in uh, religion. You know, it, it, it turns it really on you and not not necessarily on everybody else. Makes you accountable. You know, Islam. Are you at the floor? Islam. Yeah. I got a question for the floor. <clears throat> line twenty. What, what's everybody's thoughts on line twenty? When men are afraid of Allah and take him for a foe. They dress up other men in fancy garbs and call them priests. What's your thoughts on that? Um, if I may say, I feel like that's what's going on right now in the world, you know? a lot of uh, false prophets and false holy men like in the Vatican and in Israel, you know, when, once they get caught, <clears throat> once they get caught doing blasphemous things, they really don't get punished or persecuted, just exiled to their, what's it called? their their um protected land like they'll either send them to the Vatican or Israel. Not really, you know, they're it's a big fraud, bro. Mm -hmm. All right, that's wild. Anybody else had any thoughts on line 20? Say not not teaching the true uh teachings of Jesus or justice. Like not really wanting justice. So they like set up the devil, you know, like, hey, this is who you need to pay attention to instead of, you know, Jesus, like worry about what the Satan is or the devil is going to do. So they dress up, you know, Jesus or whomever it may be in whatever school of thought and teach that and call them priests. There's priests out there, preachers, holy men, you know, Brahmins, whatever you want to call them, but, you know, they set up, you know, an opposite of the, the polar opposite of what is good so you know if you know Bidu Ali they would you know say the oh, quote unquote white man you know what I mean but the focus is the quote unquote white man of modern European is what Nova Ali brought 
and you can't focus on what Jesus brought because they're like the devil's around the corner and you keep praying. So that's my, what I take from it. And that being afraid of Allah or, you know, the higher self is letting the lower self keep conquering, you know, letting the higher self, you know, be, be afraid of elevating yourself. So internally you're afraid of, you know, being who you are. So you revert to what's normal, what's natural. So it's hard because you got to fight that foe, which is the flesh. So you read the line to yourself, except in the lie from others lines to yourself. So you dress up the holy guy and toss all your worries on him, or maybe no dry lead. You, know, you don't take it. You just know dry lead, no dry lead, and not practice it in, in public and so. But I yield, but that's what I see. That's my. Any other thoughts on line 20? The meaning of foe, does that mean enemy or competitor? Yeah, enemy. Enemy, opposite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You ever heard that term friend or foe? So foe, mm -hmm. foe would be the opposite side of the spectrum. OK. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I got something to say, too, about what uh, Brother Salim said. What was it called? Like how he was, you know, speaking on sacrifices. Sacrifice doesn't have to be, mean uh, what we're, you know, accustomed to think it means. For example, we can uh, sacrifice ourselves and our lives to serve Allah, not necessarily meaning we gotta die for our people but sacrificing in a way where you're not just selfish all the time and you're actually doing something and living for the people. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not. Uh, Yelly Belly, Islam, happy holy day. Happy holy day, Islam. <clears throat> so I apologize. I'm um, tapping in a little late. Islam. Islam. Good. Good to have you, Islam. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Any other thoughts on this Quran verse for we transition to Brother Benjamin Bay's presentation? All right, look like you got the floor, brother. Brother Benjamin Bay. Oh, pretty, pretty, pretty. Am I by screen share? Fine, it is me. All right, we'll just more. Uh, 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 UT, let me go to screen. <clears throat> and start broadcast. All right, all right. All right. Can everyone see my screen? Yep, I can see it. As long as long as long. So uh, we're gonna first get into uh, uh, the teaching of the Savior and the revelation of the mysteries and the things hidden in silence. Even these things, which uh, even these things which he taught John the disciple. But I took a uh, a paragraph out of that. But just you know the after presentation, honoring mother and astrology. But I took uh, a piece right here, as you can see. I'm gonna click on it and blow it up and put it to the side here. Yeah. Everybody can see that? Yeah, if you can just move my head to the side a little out, out the way. Uh, oh, D O T. Well, as I read, I'll just like, you know, maneuver, bro. You know? Okay, all right, smile. All right, cool, cool. So from the top, honoring mother in astrology. Uh, this is from the RV Bay publications, the, the secret teachings of John. And when you see he, I'm going to say she because we're honoring the mother. You know, we're not dissing the brother or anything, but the higher self is the motherly virtue. So we're just going to you know, keep it like that. So anyone have an issue with that, be like, hey, read he. I'll be like, all right, cool. But I'm going to say she for it. There is he. Is that cool with everybody? Yes, no. I, I, Islam. So, um, 
Uh, she said to me, John, John, why do you doubt? Or why are you afraid? Why are you not unfamiliar with this image, are you? This image, are you? That is, do not be timid. I am the one who is with you always. I am the father, I am the mother, I am the son. I am the undefiled and the uncorruptible one. So that's the higher self, you know, the higher virtue, the motherly virtue. Chan die, can pass away. So. Uh, now I have come to teach you what is and what was and what will always come to pass that you may know the things which you are not, which are not revealed and those which are revealed and to teach you concerning the unwavering race of the perfect man or monarch. Now, therefore, lift your face that you may know, that you may receive the things that I shall teach you today. May tell them your, to your fellow spirits who are from the unwavering race of the perfect man. And I asked to know it, and he, to, and he said to me, and she said to me, well, almost every kind of one. And she said to me, the monad is a monarchy, which nothing is above it, which nothing above it. It is she who exists as God and the Father, which is he, which is she in action of everything. The invisible one who is above everything, who exists in, um, in and who exists as incorruption, which is in the pure light into which no one, which no eye can look. So that goes into like uh, circle seven, like, can we see Allah? You know, he's like, no, we can't see him. You know, but where's the closest place can we find him? You know, in the heart, inside, you know? And we're the only people that can see inside of ourselves, you know, physically and metaphysically. But uh, right here, uh, what is astrology? And I pulled this from uh, uh, Edamon online. So what is astrology? And it's like a compound word, so I put astro. So uh, element, active in English word, formation from the mid-1800s, and meaning star as celestial body. Outer space from Greek, astro, stem combining from astrin, star, which is related to astar, or star from the uh, Indo-European Indo 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 root, uh, stir, or star again. In ancient Greek, a star typically was a star. An asteroid mostly in plural, the stars. So we're talking about stars and we're talking about asteroids. Uh, logic or ology. So it would typically have an O where the L is. So we're just going to say logic. So, but it would typically be ology. So word forming element meaning a speaking discourse, treaties, uh, doctrine, theory, science from Greek, logia often via French logi or medieval Latin logia, from law combining from the legend to speak, tell thus the character or department of one who speaks or treats of a certain subject, Indo-European root leg to collect. So it's like the collection of stars or the collection of information on stars, so astrology. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Brother Adula Bay for that, etymology Bay teaching us in there. Uh, Zodiac. The epistemology pertaining to mother's psyche incarnated into a physical form or soul in its temple or all of the bodies that were here, you know. So the zodiac is like a, a measuring tool that we use uh, to, you know, monitor the psyche. It's kind of like a, a ruler, you know, creates lines on a piece of paper. So we didn't know how to measure the psyche of mother. We didn't, you know, know how to properly utilize the zodiac, you know. So it's like a, like a tool, you know, and things of that nature. So the ology right here, seeing Bay's work, I can see this right here. So we'll get into astrology. So this is the collection of information of stars in this book. And um, we're going to get into Circle 7 as well, but uh, seeing Bay gets to actual astrology, you know, as far as like the measuring and things of that nature. And Noble Draw Lee has like, it's more like literature based, you know, and this is like mathematical, the geometrical side. And Noble Draw Lee has the metaphysical side, you know, if you see what I'm saying. So that's why I put it under astrology. So this is a collection of information of stars. So that's what we're talking about. And this is what Sinbay brought to us because he was a great astrologer. All right. Ooh. All right, all right, all right, all right. I guess I can read that. Uh, it's the Great Pyramid is the emblem of the Moorish nation, the Great Seal. It requires only a small book to explain the necessary truth of science and history. 
On the contrary, it requires a very large book to cover up the truth of science and history by the way of mythology, theology, isms, gods, races, and nations, fictions, authors, symbol. All right, all right. So I picked this because uh, this uh, paragraph right here. And since we're honoring mother, it goes, uh, do you know any being that's superior to you or your mother? Well, you might equate yourself with the 333. Three, three. Three, three into nine goes into three times, which equals the third and 33rd degrees, meaning nine months from conception to birth. Three times three equals nine. The three threes, the letter I, corresponds with the golden number nine, which makes you and me the great I, the first supreme law and third, three thirty-third and 360 degree freeborn master masons and eastern stars, and therefore cannot be made over. Isis equals woman, moon, and earth, the great triangle, three in one powers of infinite creation of children, water and plant, life, food stuff, life and existence. And right here, this is like the geometry of it, you know. So uh, the double-headed eagle represents like uh, it won't have like a, a federal note. You got the Moorish um, pyramid on one side, and you got the eagle double-headed. So that's what he was playing for. Uh, the double-headed eagle represents the sun on the equator, twenty-nine degrees in the sixth sign of Virgo of the zodiac, and no degrees in the seventh sign Libra on September twenty-third and twenty-fourth. Which occurs, which occurs every year in Brazil, South America, 180 degrees east, longitude and zero. Thus, the U.S., Canada, which we know are corporations, and the West Indies lie in the far east, which is here, you know, where we are in North America. According to the Zodiac Universal Map of the Morris Nation and the measurement of man or mind's progress. All right, so we'll slide past that, but I wanted to uh, get into like uh, who is higher than you, you know, your mother and you. So we're honoring mother and astrology. So I want to make sure that, you know, mother is the first thing here. All right. I'm going to get used to it. There you go. Okay. Okay. All right. Right here, the mystery of Babel, the Tower of Babel. And right here, I got this because we see that modern Europeans are just everyone in general goes back and forth about things. But when we're using the Zodiac, we, there's no debate. You know, there's, there clearly is confusion because if it's like 12 p.m. and we go outside and, and the sun is out and I go outside and then you're like, hey, the sun is not out, but I see the sun, it's like, that's not debating. You know, because you're actually using Zodiac for, you know, the universe to say something. So. We're always as much American use the zodiac, so we won't be going back and forth. We can't debate if the sun is out because we can walk outside and see. Like right now, the sun isn't out. So if someone comes and be like, hey, the sun is out right now, we're like, no, it's not. You know why? Because I can actually see. You know, so let's be thankful that we can actually have tools like the universe, the sun, and moon to help to help us. So when someone tries to tell us, so it's ironical, people steal a lot of us, and you know, we have the tools surrounding us. But um here we go. The mystery of Babylon and the Tower of Babel represents the 48 states of North America divided against itself. Each of the 48 states has its capital and code of tradition different from each other, which represents 48 different nations speaking the same language. English cannot agree or understand one another on the necessary problems. That is to say, solutions to the necessary problems for the economic and social benefit for the common masses collectively owning to traditional states' rights codes. And I put 14th Amendment there because that's what the basis of the state's, you know, proceed, procedures and codes and not, you know, going with the constitution of, you know, natural rights of the people. So, you know, they're debating 14th Amendment practices or the states and codes. So they're always going to be an argument when someone gets into uh, friction with someone else or, you know, someone is harmed, you're going to debate about it without using what is already there. So if it's the Constitution or the Zodiac to explain something, to for it to be fair. And, you know, as, you know, people, you know, we're always going to go back and forth if we don't have the proper tools. Uh, each of the 48 states has the right to protect its codes or traditions. This results in confusion of tongues as a result of debates and filibusters over that which is right 
and that which is wrong according to the state's right traditional standard, all of which spells the mystery of Babel, the tire of Babel confusion, and house divided against itself cannot stand. The 12, 12 is a universal standard of measure and human moral principles standard of law of living minus customs and traditions. Customs and traditions are debatable, but the universal 12 standard law principles of living absolute meaning perfect, therefore are not debatable. So that's why we always have to go to the Zodiac, always have to in, uh, impute our principles. Because they love truth, peace, freedom, and justice can't be debated. I mean, if one is, you know, being engaged, you always have something to put up as a, like a shield. And you're, you're not going to go back and forth about what your love is, even though I'm operating in it. And when you're not operating in it, you know, you're always going to be prone to always be harmed. All right. Uh, we go right here. Yes, yes. Page nine, six, nine, six, two, two. Here we go. One who possesses knowledge of astrology, the zodiac does not have to rely on belief to be saved. Astrology prepares one to be saved by way of knowledge, one is belief. Gnosis, infidel, are Latin terms meaning knowledge or to know, and prove that you know in practical science, man or minus, relying upon belief and opinion. A belief or opinion are, are not absolute sound for ones to rely upon the perfection of the economic and social progress, but the 12 signs of the zodiac compromise the circle of 360 degrees of absolute universal perfection of science of geometry. Geometry has never failed a lie. 90 is not a mystery and neither a theory. 12 is not a mystery and, and neither opinion, belief, or theory. These two figures speak one universal language in terms of facts. And right here, I have the holy day, since it's the holy day, I'm going to read those, but specifically right here, the sixth day, uh, Venus, and with you be peace, uh, wa alakum, uh, wa, wa samalik, wa, uh, Morris Latin, Friday is derived from Freya, or Friga, Latin meaning lady of love, or woman, the god of creation of sons, unity, music, peace, and enjoyment and rested or relaxed on the seventh day. In North America, barbarian mythology, Freya is phrased in the sixth day, God created heaven and earth and rested on the seventh day. In reality, woman and sons recorded the names of mythical gods as weapons of power over one another, from which have resulted in human mental slavery. On a universal scale, Venus is exalted in the 12th sign Pisces in the region of Java in India, which we know is a corporation set on the land, uh, 360 degrees opposite of NY, uh, U.S.A., 180 degrees in reflection to it. All right, so that was still in CM Bay's book about the Holy Day. Yeah, all right, and now we're getting to basically uh, sidereal astrology, but in the form of how her Venus and Moon rule and sidereal is basically measuring from Earth to the Moon and tropical is basically the Earth going around the Sun. So I was like, oh, um, Abdullah is basically uh, describing sidereal astrology by explaining the calendars based on the moon and Venus. So this book, How Her Venus and Moon Rule, explains that. And if you don't know Abdullah El Talib Mowgli Bay, you know, so definitely check that out. You know, it's a great read, so we'll get right into it. All right. Can I move this bladder? All right. All right. Right here, we got the crescent and moon in uh, Nebra Sky Disc at the top there. I'm making a smiley face, but we'll get into right here. The horns of goats, rams, and bulls signify the lunar calendar or the moon calendar in ancient world or say the Moorish world culture. In ancient world civilization, time was measured using the phases of the moon. And we also can tell time now by the sun. It's called the hour and the moon could be like the, the minute. Uh, Indo-European root for moon is, is me and it means to measure. The image of the devil is derived from the ordinary goat, 
as the horns denote the lunar and the lunar calendar. So if you can see right here, the goat to the left right there, and then the seven days, you know, the seven days that create, you know, uh, the five lunar phases right there. So in between the seven days, there are the five lunar phases, and that the the waxing crescent is the, the goat's horns instead of, you know, uh, the devil. So we use nature and, you know, animals to, you know, bring things together. So the epistemology of, you know, the seven days would be, you know, the goat or measuring the phases of the moon in between the days as Abdullah has shown us here. And we got more goats here. The goat as the ancient symbol of fertility representing the lunar moon calendar. See the goats here, see the more star to the right down there. Oh, I'm gonna tell you my lap. Here we go. Uh, a stilly described by Bradley Scaffier, Scaffier. In his article, Mesopotamia Star and Crescent, the symbol of the moon god Sin, who was worshipped in the cities of Ur and Haran. On this, on this steely, steely are shown a crescent moon flanked by an eight pointed star on the left, an eight pointed star, an eight pointed sun on the right. Sir Leonard Woolley excavated a temple of the moon in Ur. The many artifacts proving ancient practices of the moon of moon worship are on display at the British Museum. So if you want to check that out, roll on down there. And these are, you know, uh, let's say some names of the moon deities and things of that nature. So let's see, Avery Blocher bone is a reindeer bone from France, about thirty thousand years old. Sixty nine marks made. That may decept the moon changing phases and rising points along the horizon, around, along the horizontal. Uh, the limb bombo bone is a bamboo's fibula from southern Africa, approximately 35,000 years old, possibly denoting the number of days in the cycle of lunar phase. So we love using nature to explain astrological things that are happening. Uh, Egyptians, or I should say, put Boris, also observed the 28 day moon cycle that used a royal cubic made up of seven palms, which is made up of four fingers, signifying the four day phases, the four seven day phases of the 28 lunar calendar. And you got some examples here the 28 part Moore's cubic design, pottery fragment from Hagar Quim, uh, 3000 BC. Uh, the petroglyph from India, uh, common throughout ancient Asia, Asia and Arabia, is the 28 or 27 lunar mansions, or the nakshatras, which we'll get into later, but we'll show how the how Moors were already using nakshatras and, you know, Eastern astrology, as they would say. Uh, 13 moons on the turtle's back in common to many Aboriginal tribes of North America. Uh, big horn medicine wheel with 28 spokes. And you see the, the correlation of 28 and 17 and things of that nature. So, yeah. uh, the goat of men and Mendez in Egypt. Uh, uh, new moon takes the bull by the horns uh, by Ian Ben Zion, post in the Times of Israel on November 16, 2003. And that's a link there if you want to go check out more things about. Uh, how the Moors, you know, incorporated moon uh, astrology for agricultural purposes, you know, and bringing life to Earth. You know? And uh, we're getting to right here. In Inanna, Queen of Heaven, Virgin Mary, a uh, queen in Iniana's uh, journey as she descended from the heavens to meet the Queen of the Underworld. Kezikol, uh, um, sorry. Smoker's star eye, uh, Aztec decode, Cody sometimes depict Venus with a smoking star eye, invoking imagery of comets which often seen near Venus when they approach or recede from the sun. Um, and right here is an image of the Venus transiting into her next 584 day cycle. And let's see if it's not a blur. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, the helical horizon of Venus occurs when the planet Venus is first visible in the eastern horizon as the morning star just before dawn. 
the helix horizon of Venus appears between March and April. This is true, Easter, the Eastern star. You can see the, the star right there on the upside down. And uh, the helix horizon of Venus appears when the planet Venus is the first visible star. Uh, vis yeah, first visible in the Eastern horizon as the morning star just before dawn. And here's a, a better you know, picture of the uh, lineup or alignment of the sun right there in the middle and Venus and the Earth. And it creates the actual star that you know, we have on our flag. I have an emblem here that has the same thing. So the circle right there would be the sun and the side of it would be direction, you know, when Earth and Venus and the sun, you know, create that star, which I think is pretty cool that, you know, our ancestors, you know, measured 584 day cycles over a period of seven years and created like this image in the sky. And you like, you know, I just think that's like super tight to know like that image, you know, came from, you know, you know, it's divine, you know, so it's, and it's in nature here, but to know that it's, it's drawn with Venus you know, Venus is the planet of love, and that's how I mean our first you know, principle is, is, you know, I think that's staple, you know, and that's the image of mother. That's arm, leg, leg, arm, head right there. So, you know, that is divine. So if that doesn't say, like, a lot of God's this, you know, I don't know what does. But moving along, right, okay, we'll show the rubber bell. Yeah, the Venus cycle, the morning cycle, storing the female deity or mother back into astrology of Easter. Reawakening in the fertility, the fecundity and femi femi feminine nature of Easter. The planet Venus is the Eastern star, and the order of the Eastern star right here. And that's the Rosabella that uh, Venus makes you know, as traced through the sky, formed as Venus rising heliopoly five times in eight years. And one time, and I'm sorry, my ancestors were right here. Wow. You know what I'm saying? A pretty, pretty cool people right here. Uh, they acknowledge the ancient knowledge of Venus calendar suppressed. So once again, uh, taking away moon measurement is another way of suppressing mother. You know, so it's kind of like um, verse 20. You know, they just dressed up um, tropical or just sun astrology and worry about the sun, but the moon also, you know, takes its place, you know, like mother takes her place, you know. Everything isn't just so, you know, male driven. You know, the world needs its balance. You know, so it needs that that stability of the sun and that nurturing of the moon. You know, you need the the heat to heat things and water to secure to cool down. Uh, but uh, educating the general public about the agricultural importance of the planet Venus and the moon, and many and many as used in the ancient society, will stimulate the thinking about the Europeans' political motives. Of distorting the goat into a symbol of the symbol of evil called the devil. The European shriners placed the Moorish scimitar above the crescent moon, the five pointed star, and shrunken woman's, Moorish woman's head placed within the scimitar. But because of crusades against the Moors, 1095 to 1235, the Inquisition against the Moors, 1492 to 1610. The European colonialization of the Moorish land Amer of Moorish land in America of 1492 to present. The ancient knowledge of the Venus and Moon calendar is not widely known today. The ancient concept of fertility in woman are associated with Venus and the Moon. The word Moon, menstruation, menopause, and month come from the Latin menus. The woman's 28-day menstrual cycle is is tied. The 28 moon cycle. You know, I'm not sure that many, if many, most women, you know, know that or young mothers know that, you know, but if they did, you know, it wouldn't, you know, be so dreadful when that, you know, time comes around for them. You know, they would they would be prepared for it. You know, just things of that nature. Uh, in 1870, Walter Fleming's founder of the ancient order, Arabic order of the mystic shrine known as the Shriners International Place. The more scimitar, right there, that, that image above right here. And the logo of the mystic order veiled prophets of the enchanted realm known as the grottoes. These guys are here with the, the horns, which goes back to the moon, the waxing and the waning moon that they took and distorted. And see, 
you know, but we're not you know, saying anything, man. But here's another image of that, you know, beautiful divine creation right there of Venus seen from Earth over eight years, five pointed star, the eight pointed star, 584 day Venus cycle equals eight years. And uh, these are the Sumerian, you know, tablets. So we go all the way back to, you know, those times. So Sumerian, M-E-R, more, American, you know, M-E-R, more. So, you know, we're all through that. So, you know, nobody beats more, as uh, Brother Kujo was saying, but, you know, just bringing Mother all the way from there right here. So they were all, we were always honoring Mother, but there was a suppression of that through taking away the astrological side of using astrology instead of, you know, am I going to be rich? Use of astrology type deal. Not hate on that, but, you know. Too. Uh, the crusaders against the Moors and the suppression of the ancient practice and knowledge of the Venus town. Uh, European Shriners placed the no, here we go, they, same thing again about you know they placed that over just not allow us to okay. there's uh, more facts about the, the Venus uh, rising at each of the extreme points. Once every eight years, it's you know, very detailed work that Abdullah Bay, you know, collected for us to study and for us to, you know, expand our knowledge upon it, you know. All uh, right, here are some pretty, pretty nice designs. The 365 number of days, they sell a year times eight, number of times the earth revolves around the sun, and the period of time the planet Venus creates the five petal star formation as viewed from Earth. Beautiful. Uh, 2,920 days, and that's the star right there. Uh, the pentagram symbolizes the 584-day cycle of Venus in a year. So the next time you see the star, you're like, oh, yeah, that's the 584-day cycle of Venus right there. You know, some people see, you know, a star, and some people see a geometrical alignment, you know? Uh, so right there at the bottom, the pentagram within a circle representing the Earth and Venus. Earth and Venus alignment. So you know, can you know stack the principles. So just the stars, the Venus cycle, and the circle, and the stars, Earth and Venus. You know, so you know, put some um, metaphysical trees on there for general trees. All right, here we'll uh, tr transliterate the the moon in the Bible. So right here we got the references in the Bible. Uh, King Fame version. We got a couple verses here. We get into them. Uh, and David said unto uh, Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow. Well. First of all, this is first Samuel, uh, 20 degrees, five minutes, or you know, verse 20, or chapter 20, verse 5. Um, and David said unto Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon, and I shall not fail to sit with the king at me, and let me go, and that I may hide myself in the field unto the third day at evening. And then we got Second Kings, fourth chapter, 24, 24, 23rd verse, or four degrees, 23 minutes. Uh, and he said, Wherefore wilt thy go to him today? Is it neither new moon nor Sabbath? And she said, It shall be well. And I don't know what does that mean? So it just means, you know, you know, pay attention to see what you know phase of the moon is in and then see if it be well. You know, because the phases of the moon aren't predictable like the seasons. You know, so you have to pay attention to those type of things. Uh, Isaiah 66, uh, 23. And it shall come to pass that from one, one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me. Saint the Lord. Now Ezekiel 46 and 1. Saint the Lord God, the gate of the inner court that looketh toward the east shall be set the sixth working day, but on the Sabbath it shall be open. In the day of the new moon, it shall be open. Uh, last one here, saying uh, Amos 8 and 5, saying, when, when will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn, and the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat, making the ephant, uh, ephant small and the shekel great. And the falsifying the balances by deceit. All uh, right, here we got Jesus, sun, the devil, moon, 
or not enemies, analyzing two different ways to measure time. So that goes to chapter 20 and dressing up, you know, the moon as the devil, you know, making the sun, you know, the thing to worship. But it's just a, a different way to tell time. You can tell time by using Jesus or the sun, or you can tell time by the moon or the devil, which is kind of wild, but you shouldn't say the devil, but you say the moon. When you want to plant things, you can use the moon. You know what I mean? You want to see what season it is for the next 30 odd days. See where the sun is. You want to see what is going on in the actual damn time? You know, check where the moon is. Uh, right here, I've got this because it's a picture of sin, which is the moon right there in the picture of Jesus, which is the sun. And just the, the, the distortion of just the natural thing that we use to cultivate civilization and what we built civilization. So when we hear or say Moors are the, the builders and creators of civilization, like how? This is how, you know, epistemology, you know, measurements, you know, taking time out to see cycles, you know, recognizing cycles, writing them down, see how they correlate and help our society or not. There's nothing that screams more science than that, you know. Um, the European crusade and position military strategy of misrepresenting women as the cause of fall of men and the original state is covering up for the modern European males taking control of the agriculture. And when you take control of the agriculture, you take control of us because we are you know, a part of nature because nature influences us and there's nothing outside of ourselves that's nothing in us. So when they control things that come out of the ground, they're controlling, you know, the, they're attempting to control the universe because, you know, we don't actually, you know, make the sun rise and so it can help the things in the earth grow. You know, that's the bond. You know, we're just here to adhere to that. You know, and just make sure you're in pocket and outside to receive the things that the sun is bestowing upon us. You know, uh, this European colonialization, birthright, theft strategy has been socially engineered to mentally disalign the native Aboriginal and Indigenous peoples from the natural, fertile, uh, symmetrical, uh, regenerative, and renewal renewal process in nature and her divine arithmetic connection to woman, restoring these ancient divine matriarchal religious and social ways to the minds of the natives or Moors, Abor Aboriginal and indigenous peoples, Moors, will help to end the world dominance of the military artificially social engineered patriarchy patriarchal mind control strategy of suppressing women and their offspring perpetually for generations. Furthermore, the Europeans linguistic deceptive practice of misrepresenting the Sumerian word for moon, which is sin, and a wrongful act is an attack on the ancient Sumerian of Mayan moon and Venus agricultural calendar and culture. You know? All right, so now we'll get into like East Indian astrology, which is basically moon astrology. So how here in the West, as they say, they got Jesus, John, and those guys who represent celestial bodies. The same thing happens in Vedic astrology. Vedic, you know, we'll get into that. This means star, just like astro means star. So like Vedic astrology is this star astrology. You know, or, you know, information gathered about the stars, but in East Indian form. So we'll get into the Vedic astrology or um, from BPS HS chapter two. Uh, the unborn Lord has many incarnations, uh, just like we do, but we don't remember. Uh, he has incarnated as the nine Nava Grahas. And Grahas are planets, by the way, uh, to bestow on the living being the results due to their karmas. He is a Janardhan. He assumed the auspicious form of the Brahas to destroy the demons, evil forces, and, and sustain the divine beings. So this would be, in my mind, say is Noble John Lee incarnating to suppress the evil forces or our lower selves and to, you know, uplift the divine being, which is mother, you know, which we all come to. So he's uplifting the, up, uplifting the divine beings which come out of mother and mother herself. It's trying to correlate, you know, more signs into the Vedic and Indian, Indian. 
uh, the being with more ziva, zivatmas or our mortal beings, the high degree of paramatmas for, from the grahas did incarnate as Ram, Krishna, etc. After completion, the mission, the paramatmas of the respective grahas again merge into the grahas according to the plan. So uh, I'll explain, uh, Nova Drali came here to earth from a divine place because he was divinely prepared for us. But he also told us that he, when his work is done, he's gonna go to the spiritual plane and do work. So that would be back to a Brahma. And me personally, I look at Nova Drali as the sun because he's our justice and Jesus. And when the sun comes out, you know, we can see things, you know, it's warm, it's, it's you know, it's not as scary as in the nighttime, you don't have a flashlight, you know, and he said he took the covers off all things. And at nighttime, it's like the covers on everything. You, know, you can't see anything. But when the sun or justice comes, you can see, you know, all the rat holes are, are covered and stuff. You know, I can, I can see that I'm not going to fall and hurt myself or be molested by something that's, you know, in the dark. You know, so that's how I took that, as, you know, Krishna uh, coming here and teaching. And the same thing as Noah Ali, you know, assisting mother and helping humanity. You know, from whomever son that wants to take advantage of mother, you know what I mean? Whatever practice of life that may be. Or religion. Uh, the Jiva Ma portions from the Grahas take birth as human beings and live their lives according to the karmas, again merging with Grahas. So this would be us. So we live lives according to, you know, our karmas. But if we don't know about that, we're going to you know, keep coming back here. You know, you know. Uh, and at the at the time of the great destruction, the Grahas as well were merged back into the vision. So that would be like all of this stuff, you know, the things that we can see will pass away. You know what I mean? So that things outside of it, that once was not a sin, that once was not a move, you know, these things had to be thought of, you know, so it's, you know, it's vital to, you know, know about these things, to know that, you know, things are temporary, but that doesn't mean that they end. Like, this isn't the end, all be all. You know, we can't be stuck here. This is only a tool for us to propel, you know, from where once our natural state is. Uh, the one who knows of these will become versed in the knowledge of the past, present, and future. Without a knowledge of Jyotish, uh, these cannot be known. Hence, everyone should have a knowledge of Jyotish, particularly the Brahman. So the Brahman, you know, be a person like Nova Ali. He has the knowledge, you know, of the divine you know, to teach to everyone so they can elevate, you know, but that doesn't make like a, a special person, you don't know, like follow them, they just, those were the, the names of the teachers that were taught, you know, so at the time, Nobu Ali, you know, he, he was a master, so master would be like the same as a Brahmin, you know, just well-versed in some type of knowledge. Uh, the one who devoted, uh, who, the one who devoid of knowledge of Jyotis Blames this Vedic science or moon science or anything will go to the heat, will go to hell, uh, Ravara, Ravara, yeah, that one, and will be reborn blind. So, yeah, so the ones who neglect the, not the teachings of Nobu Jali and will blame, you know, more science for it not working, but it's like they're devoid of the knowledge that they don't actually want to know. Not blaming them anyway, you know, you don't want to know if something. You, you're gonna say it doesn't work. So, you know, you don't have the applications of using a spoon. You can be like, I can't feed myself. What's, what's going on here? And it's like, well, no of it, you know, want to learn it. You know, don't be devoid of the knowledge of knowing how to use a spoon to feed yourself. Don't be devoid of the knowledge of the universe, you know, to elevate the self, which is inside. And, you know, the body is a conduit for the self to elevate, honest to mother, you know, for allowing us to have your body. All right. Uh, the Jana. I said that super confidently. Uh, Janar Hana, uh, who destroys uh, Jama birth, brought about uh, by Abhida uh, ignorance and bestows on the worshiper uh, the awareness of his identity with the Lord. So basically, uh, once again, a, a, thing, uh, a take to Nova Jali coming down and you know, smashing the ignorance. Here it will be Krishna. He would come down and you know take the the birth and the birth of ignorant thing. So Nova Jali had come down and to do that as well to birth new thoughts. You know, there's a new time, a new era of time to, to get rid of it. So those coming here are still trying to bring him. There's no the, 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 the divine brought Nova Jali here to 
you know, make the void of ignorance. But those who care, you know, want to get out of it. Uh, we should see this timeline as angular. How is this? Not what the hell is that? Uh, to, to how our body, mind, and psyche were formed and how they operate. Our body and mind life on earth is embedded with the intelligence of the entire cosmos. This intelligence reaches back into the midst of time for eons of patient uh, for, forbearance. Uh, and for where did this come? God, some might say. If there is any need to call anything God, it will certainly have to be, it will certainly have to include the sun and moon as main agents of work. Our bodies, minds, and spirits are the product of 4.0 billion years of love and dedication from the sun. But that doesn't mean, you know, we know not to like worship it. And we know God means to invoke this in action and use the sun and moon as, you know, principles to allow you to do that. So you can, you know, be grateful, you know, for those tools to allow you to, you know, know where you come from. You know, you, you come from the divinity. You are divinity made flesh, or the mind made flesh, or mother's mind made flesh. You know, so we can include the sun and the moon as those symbols and not, you know, worship those symbols, you know, use them like the, the fork and the knife. You know, thankfully, we don't have them use our hands like barbarians. Uh, right here, the plants as gods or forces. Sun, power, sattvic, moon connection, sattvic, and we'll get into the, the names on the side there. Uh, Mars, strength, tomasic, uh, mercury, intelligence, rajasic. Jupiter, wisdom, Sophic, Venus, happiness, Rajasic, Saturn, control, Tomasco. All right. Uh, we have the reptile brain here, which is like the lower part of the brain, the fight or flight, which is Saturn, which is fear. It's like, oh, you know, I think of Saturn like uh, the kneecaps. The kneecaps are not going to let you go anywhere. That didn't mean they're not bad, they're just not going to let you fall. And that's kind of what fear can be, you know, the fear, you know, fire cannot let you get burned, you know, but don't let your fear hold you back from other things that you know that are not as harmful, you know. The reason you're afraid of fire, because the fear of fire is not burn, it's hurt, you know, but the fear of bettering yourself is only because you're comfortable with, you know, what you're doing right now, instead of asking more of yourself. So that fear is a fear that can hinder you. And Mars, we all know Mars, you know, the anger, but we can, you know, flip that to, you know, the executed uh, force, you know, kind of like a bow and arrow. You, know, you can just pull back and, you know, let it fly, you know, be disciplined, you know, know where you're going to, you know, put this arrow because, you know, there's no going back when you let it go. You know, kind of like your angle. Once it, once it goes there, you know, you got to pick up those pieces. Excuse me. Well, we got the mammal brain, you know, the communion brain, or like, you know, like dogs cats and things of that nature, you know, just happy to be here, you know, things of that nature, you know, you can use dogs, cats, or the mental part of the brain, just like right now, you know, you know, talking, there's no higher than, you know, you don't want to be, an animal mammal doesn't want to be more than what it is, you know, because that's all it's capable of doing. So the human brain, evolution, or the, I would say the neocortex, because Animals don't have a neocortex brain, so I'll look at the human brain or the sun and the moon, you know, the the un the the unconditional planets that that give, you know, the sun is sustainable. It's, it's always gonna, you know, shine bright and give, you know, it's and the moon is gonna reflect that. And we don't get a, a lot of, you know, energy or can see the other planets because they're kind of kind of distant, you know, but the sun and the moon are closer, kind of like, you know, how we use the right and left hemisphere of our brain, but the other parts of our body, you know, we use well, but they're not like close. Like our stomach, like way down here, but we still can feel it, you know, but we have to be up here first. You know what I mean? It's things of that nature. And this is a, oh wait, hold on. Yeah, right, right, cause I have some things written now. I'm about to say, here we go. Keep it like this. Everybody can still see this? Uh, Vedic astrology, right here, I have the definition for Vedic. Uh, literally, knowledge, understanding, especially sacred knowledge from root, vid to know, uh, modern European root, uh, weed to see. 
And we just went over those, you know, pictures right there. I had uh, notes in between that I'll read here, the meanings of them right here. Um, so the meaning of the picture above right here, the 813, uh, means that the, the divine beings such as Vishnu or Morris case, Noble Jali, takes form as a graha, a planet, and merge back into the graha planet when they meet, when they're done with their work here on the earth plane. Noble Jali told us as he was doing his work on the spiritual planet. Uh, for right here, uh, the planets themselves are the spiritual or the physical incarnation of Lord Vishnu or Mother, the visible form of the celestial energies of Mother, whom we all come from. Planets incarnate from dark matter of the universe as Moors incarnate from the dark divinity within our mother's womb. Uh, in Sanskrit, the word Jyotish, translated as science of light, which you know is a, a star, uh, refers to the profound and mathematically sophisticated form of astrology originating in ancient Vedic traditions of India. Sometimes known as Vedic astrology, Jyotish describes the planetary patterns at the time of our birth and can give us a valuable clue, valuable clues to understanding our life's journey through careful analysis of these cosmic influences. I'll refer to the circle seven and clock of destiny to gain knowledge of self using the Morse zodiac. Being void of the knowledge of the Morse zodiac or energies of mother expressed in the universe, then one will blame life for things not going as one thought it should. So that's what we're saying right here, the one who's devoid of the knowledge of Jyotish. And we look at Jyotish as the circle seven or the clock of death. So if you're devoid of the circle seven and the clock of death in these times, you know, you know off the deep end, you, you go, you know. Uh, we got Lord Vishnu or son sent by mother to uplift the consciousness and kill ignorance. As Noble Dra Lee was sent divinely by mother to uplift the consciousness and of humanity, which is her mother. Uh, the planets are responsible for creating everything and are the forces of the universe that have been here for billions of years in the divine dance, guiding humanity and tracking the evolution of humanity. All uh, right here, the ex that's what I was looking for, the explanation of the Satvik. I see you uh, Satva right there as a typo on my behalf, which you retrograde things there. Uh, but Satvik uh, is a state of mind in which the mind is steady, calm, peaceful of the name sattvic implies one who is divine pure and spiritual sattvic individual will always work for the welfare of the world they're hardworking, alert and generous they live life moderately and have good memory and concentration sattvic qualities include a leading chaste life eating moderately using precise language and speaking truths palatably palatably so the planets that are sattvic right there are the sun and uh, Jupiter and the moon, like we said, you can look at the moon and the signs of mother and the father and Jupiter's uh, grandparent. Those people tend to give, you know, unconditionally. The father is always going to come and provide. The mother is always going to come and give that nourishment. You know, a grandparent is always going to provide that wisdom, wisdom, stability, and nourishment. You know, it's not going to be a, a selfish one. They're, not, they're always not going to think about themselves all of them think about you know the other person whether that be a son a granddaughter or someone that you know is in need of some type of guidance you know so like the sun assists all the other planets so they can do their things such as mercury mars venus you know saturn you know as you know the mom and dad do their things so the children can allow be allowed to blossom uh tomastic or thomas is associated with darkness it is said that a Tomastic person is concerned with the self, uh, dissatisfied and materialistic. Tem Tomas manifests from ignorance and deludes all beings from their spiritual truth. Other Tomastic qualities are lazy, disgust, attachment, depression, helpless, doubt, guilt, shame, boredom, addiction, hurt, sadness, apathy, confusion, grief, uh, dependency, and ignorance. And those planets, Tomastic planets, would be. Uh, Mars and Saturn. 
and uh, Mars and Saturn because Saturn deals with control and deals with uh, stopping things. Like I said, your kneecaps, you know, it'd be, you know, good for you not fall off a cliff. But hey, if you need to stop eating Cheetos and things of that nature, you need some type of discipline, some type of, you know, boundary, you know. And with Mars being, you know, to my state, it's, it's the self, it's Aries, you know, it's like the baby. You know, if the baby can't get, you know, the the, the apple, the crushed apple, all his world, you know, upside down, scream, holler, all that it could do to get what it needs. Very Martian, like it didn't have the capability to understand that it it is too young to do things on its own. It can't just go and get what it needs, what it desires. So it has to do a tomastic thing. But that doesn't mean look at tomastic as like, oh, well, that's bad. It's, you know, that's just an expression you know, that needs that balanced out. So, okay, cool. If the child has a tomastic expression, how you balance it out? You would balance it out with a sostic, you know, mindset. You'd be calm. You're like, okay, cool. I assess the situation. You know, like a, like a parent, you know, like a guy. Okay, I see what's going on here. Boom, here you go. And the tomasticity goes down. I, I probably made tomasticity up, but, you know, a tomastic moment can be balanced out with a sostic, you know, mindset. And right here, uh, the last one, uh, we have Jostic is a state of energy, action, change, and movement. The nature of Rajas is attraction, longing, and attachment. And Rajas strongly bind us to the fruits of our work. Other Rajastic qualities are anger, euphoria, anxiety, fear, irritation, worry, restlessness, stress, courage, uh, remuneration, determination, and chaos. And the plan planets that are Rajastic are Venus and mercury and these things do it work so we we go to work and buy beautiful things which are venus you know we organize things excuse me which are, are mercury you know virgo things like that and you want to when you organize things you typically don't do it for yourself you kind of do it for you know the whole system when you go out to the work you want to be organized you want to make relationships you're going to communicate you want to make sure that what you're saying is going to, you know, better you know, the next person, you know, and on the opposite side of that is worry, you know, you can overthink, you know, a Virgo can be very analytical and on the opposite or the reflection of Pisces can just look over everything. So you have to have, you know, a balance, you know, sometimes you need a uh, tomastic mindset when dealing with rejastic things. So you need a, a kind of a shrewd or, or, or some energy or direct, point sometimes so you don't get too restless you don't get irritated or have anxiety or or you know get shaken up and it become angry you know? so overall you know try to balance all of your tomastic and rajastic you know things that happen in life with a sophic mind you know so always think sun and moon and you know venus mercury and saturn things that happen you know those are the tools to help us you know, the tools that mother and father gave us so we can, you know, operate and, you know, balanced out here. And speaking of balance, we were talking about the brain and the evolution of that. And right here, this picture is basically the zodiacal, the sidereal moon measurement of astrology and tropical sun-based measurement. So the earth is in the middle and the 12 triangles around the earth would be the 12 solar zodiac signs, such as, you know, Aries, Libra, things of that nature, which is, you know, created, you know, by the sun. And the angles and the tilt of the earth and the sun staying, in, you know, certain signs for a certain amount of degrees. And outside of that, you have 28 nashatras, which go back to the Sumerian times or uh, how her Venus and moon rule when we were using the moon to measure things from earth instead of the sun, because the sun stays in one spot for 30 days. So it'd be kind of difficult to plant something when, you you know, you need it kind of, you know, today, you know, you need a tomato. You don't want to make 30 days for you know, a tomato. You want to make sure you planted it and it's going to grow the time that you need it. You know, so we got away from that through, you know, the Greeks coming through and, you know, changing things up, which we'll get into. But long story short, they, they pinned them together. So now we use... We use the zodiac, which is the first ring, which moves instead of the chakras, which are fixed stars in the universe that we measure. You know, you kind of have like a, a, a pinpoint. You have a certain point to use 
instead of a progress point that's always going to move. So it's just go to that. Ma'am. All right, all right. Uh, the Moors Zodiac or band of stars around the earth that, that Moors measured things with was connected with the seasons. Instead of the Moors Zodiac being referenced as a, a precise ecliptic coordinate point in the sky, which Moors used to measure the, the equinoxes. Uh, in the Rig Vedas, the Indians of Moors measured the, oh, wow, I'm phasing that thing. There we go. There we go. Uh, measured the solstices with the nakshatras coordinates, but the Greeks pinned the two together. Now the equinoxes with the thing we measured it with, the Indians or Moors wasn't going for it and kept the traditional moon slash mother based astrology. So now that's why you have an east and west astrology base because the Moors or Indians in those times didn't go along with what the Greeks were doing. They were like, no, we're still gonna measure things by the moon, you know, cause it's more accurate for us. And we know when the seasons are because every year the sun is, is, is in Aries, which is in is Mesa and Sidereal, which is basically 12 degrees away. So it was no big change, but once again, they, you know, wanted to had a patriarchal mindset about things and the sun-based astrology was more simple for them. You know, we were very detailed people. So using the moon, you know, you kind of had to, you know, track that because the moon moves every two and a half days, the sun every 30 days, you know. So, you know, we were, we were really doing our thing, really working out there. So the Moors are like, no, we're not doing that. We're, we're still keeping, you know, moon mother-based astrology, you know. So and this, this is a picture of that again. In the middle, you got your solar base, you know, measuring zodiacal signs such as Aries, Pisces, Taurus, and then you got your 27 nakshatras around that, which goes with the 28 and 28 cycles of the moon that we read about in um, Abdullah's book, How Her Venus and Moon Rule. So, you know, Moors were always, always doing sidereal astrology, you know, and here's a uh, picture of that again, it's just how detailed and just honor, you know, to what we were and you know how thorough we were and what we did you know what i mean so it's honors to that you know honoring mother and father are together or the masculine and feminine principles in nature you know not just the masculine and feminine nature you know there has to be a balance yeah yeah here we go uh, the tropical astrology earth going around the sun not based on measuring planets moving around the earth which is astrology a precise ecliptic coordinate, which is the sidereal or moon measuring base uh, zodiac, which the Indians or Moors, and we also say Indians because I'm reading, um, they, they're saying Indians, but you know, I, we know it was, it was Moors. Uh, conflation, conflation's idea of putting the seasons on the earth to the planets moving around the earth. Tropical zodiac is taking a portion of how the precession of the equinox has moved, has moved of in relation to the sky and projecting that into the sky instead of measuring the fixed portions onto the fixed stars. So, so basically using the fixed stars that are in the sky or in, that are in the sky and, and instead of they use where the sun was. And, you know, that makes sense. It's like they all, like the, the nowhere the solar base is a diagonal sign was so wherever Aries was in the sky instead of a nakshatra point which is never changes but Aries will always you know be in a different spot every two hours but a fixed star never changes because it's fixed right there you know they our ancestors drew around the fixed stars which created the 27 nakshatras and the 12 signs of the zodiac which is still tight taking an abstract sky and you know, slicing it up like that, you know, which is, you know, you know, still kind of mind boggling, but, you know, it's super, super, super tight. Uh, here's a picture of, you know, what I'm explaining, the earth and the sun, which, you know, the sun or the earth going around the sun, creating, you know, the, the seasons and the months and the cosmos of the fixed stars and the planets and the universe, again, creating 
the measuring tool. So you got the zodiac, the band of stars, you know, and the fixed stars within those stars, and you're measuring that from Earth, you know, to get you know what you need information and whatever cycle. Uh, the Greeks conflating more zodiacs and the seasons and changed the definition of the more zodiac when Claudius Ptolemy, a Roman citizen uh, domiciling in Alexandria, Egypt, proposed to pinning the vernal equinox to the zodiac or to the thing we measured from Earth to the fixed stars, right? You know, so basically uh, suppressing moon-based astrology and only using the sun to measure things and not using the moon to measure things. And as more as we were 306 degrees of knowledge, so we used both. You know, at the end of the, you know, the jibber jabbers, we were using the sun and the moon, you know, to correlate life instead of the sun. And uh, I yield, and that's my uh, presentation. That's loud. Beautiful presentation, man. To my Thank friend. you, uh, please, Karen. Beautiful. Brother Benjamin, Islam, or give thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. Was was great, was yeah. Great, no. yeah. I'll get better on the uh, Indian words. Yeah, but no, nah, man, that's so. right. <clears throat> Good bless, noble. Give thanks. Now, I wanted to dialogue with some things that you said, man. Uh, first, you was like, moon means sin, right? Yeah. So, it took me to the Bible where it talks about Mount Sinai, mm. Sinai, which essentially means the temple, the temple of the moon. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? That's where my mind. And Pineal, you know, yeah. the actual Pineal. Mm -hmm. yeah. And would, uh, would that be right hemisphere? Like sin, like Jacqueline Boyd, like a, the moon and the sun. So sin would be like the divinity part of the brain. And then the sun would be, you know, the logical exit the nose you know like i feel it in my gut or like no i need to know like i need to have a phone call it's like no nah, just you know go to move type deal so right right yeah. you know what i mean then uh that's what upload is like, okay, that's right there in the bible mount sinai simple of the moon is right there and, all, and you know yeah. simple, simple of the moon and sun is in america you know so yeah and now samaria the templates the samarian uh templates had the actual sun and moon thing right there as well. So. Mm -hmm. And this is because of the sun, because the, the sun yeah. doesn't set or rise on the Moroccan Empire. I'm probably butchering that, but you know, I've seen the sun and the moon in the sky at the same time here. I don't know if everybody ever seen that, but. Yeah, exactly. Like a couple months ago, about four or five, I've seen it, yeah. Um, yeah, that's very well. And then another thing you said, as far as how Friday, goes to the Latin fria, which, so basically Friday means the lady of love. Yeah. So that was fire. <laughs> that was fire. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. Abdullah Bank, he is like, he bring it down so like wild in the language, you take you there, so you know multiple languages, like, oh wow, this means this. And right. French and more means love. So. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's a uh, Excellent presentation, man. Uh, any, any of the Moors in here got anything? That's it was that long? I appreciate it. I heard someone say something in the chat. But yeah. No, that's putting them fire signs up. Oh, yeah. When, when I first started like studying, it was like, I would say a B between Western astrology and Eastern astrology. And I was like, I don't, I don't really see, but I was I saw the similarities. And I was like, I saw Sumerian, I saw M-E-R, I was like, that's Moorish. And then Abdullah Bey is always talking about agriculture, agriculture, you know, and how we use moon and Venus for agriculture and corn. And I'm like, that's it. That's, there's no beef, there's no difference. Mm -hmm. That's wild. Yeah. That's, that's a whole nother level of breaking down the holy day. You know what I mean? And uh, it's another way for us to look at Friday in a different vein. So I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you for allowing me. Uh, thank you, Morris, for you know trusting me and to share my little bit that I have. And other Morris that presented as well. Appreciate that. For, for the room, setting the tone. Setting the tone, man. Hopefully that that inspire you know people to put that same preparation in, man, because that's scholarship. You know what I'm saying? Morris is intelligent, genius citizen, man. You yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and knowing about the star thing really blowing my mind. I'm like, wow, to 
to really see the cycle of knowing that image was made in the sky. Like, yeah, just behind me, right? Just to make that. You know? Yeah, there's like a 584 day cycle, which is like eight years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's wild. That's wild. That kind of time when they hand. Uh, thank you, uh, to Miss Jalissa. I've seen that. Thank you all, more. Appreciate. It. And uh, Brother Bennett Bay, hopefully you got something out that because I know you was asking for some astrology. You wanted to dive in deep into that, so hopefully that hit home with you, brother. Um, <clears throat> Anybody else have any thoughts before we close out here? Please uh, put them on the floor. All righty. Well, this was a beautiful holy day. Once again, Brother Benjamin Bay, appreciate you. And uh, happy, happy holy day to all the Moors. Hope everybody have a beautiful rest of their night. And uh, see everybody on Sunday. It's live. Peace. Islam. Peace and love. Happy Holy Day, everyone. Happy Holy Day. Peace and love. Happy Holy Day. Happy Lady of Love. Lady of Love. Peace and 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 love.